Hey, uh, good afternoon. Mimi sikuwa ni meprepare hii ni meambiwa tu kidogo tu na kare that kindly read the eology. I've had the pleasure of knowing Wangari and Mwadulo as my colleagues, as people we've worked together for many years. I've watched Joe babysat him as we did rehearsals and performances with Wangari. So this is indeed a Sunday. And to the parents of this young boy, Poleni Sana, Mwadulo was my director as late as last year when I was doing Kina. And so this is this is not easy. Uh, and as I'm impromptu as this is to be able to read the eulogy of such a young boy, I will do it with a lot of pride because I see that these two young people brought up a child so beautiful and wonderful that so many beautiful things are being said about him, that so many of his schoolmates and agements are here to testify the braveness and the beauty that was Joe Wadulo. So without any further ado, allow me to read the eulogy of Joseph Wadulo. The year is 2006, the place Kikuyu Hospital forgot of. It's a few minutes from midnight on the 9th of December, a champion is born. Morrison Wadulo and Mary Wangari Kiyosho welcome a little human being into this world. His name is Joseph Mwadulo Mwakoho. Weighing 3.8 kilograms at birth, Joe was a typical bouncing baby boy. His beautiful eyes, chubby cheeks, and naive smile brought joy, purpose, and happiness to his parents' life. Joe was a sweet boy from birth, staying true to his name, Mwadulo, which means beehive. A great name that he shares with his grandfather, Joseph Mwadulo. A flower to his parents, a gem to his grandparents and family, and a son to the Kenya film and theatre industry, Joe was loved by everyone. He was a, bro a brave, charming, and lovable boy. Joe was caring and very accommodating. One of his mom's fondest moments was when Joe, at three years old, dragged her to the neighbor's house to check on a baby who was intensely crying. She remembers Joe rushing towards a little girl, comforting her. This was Joe, the selfless, caring boy. And just like any other growing boy, Joe was adventurous, playful, and curious. He had his moments, like when he was struck on top of a tree, when he was struck rather, on top of a tree while harvesting the neighbor's mangoes and had to fight a dog. Chelsea remembers when he would hide under water at the swimming pool, then prank his friends by touching their feet. He was full of life, so full of energy. He was so glad when he got a baby brother, Jeremy, and he became Jeremy's basket, uh, basketball coach and protector. Jeremy might have lost a tooth in the process, but hey, he was counting. Joe was a true big brother. If train up a child in the world, he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from me. It was an example. It would be Joe. He loved God and was not afraid of declaring it. He was a leader and an achiever even from a young age. Abby remembers their moments at the world, at the Word of Life camp, a Bible camp that he frequently attended during the school holidays. She remembers how active he was in memory verse competitions, his participations during Bible hour, how loved he was by everyone, and his great interest in basketball at the camp. Mikal, his counselor at the camp, remembers how passionate and dedicated Joe was in the last camp of 2023, Joe was crowned the best camper, a title he still holds. He was looking forward to the April 2024 camp, as well as the Form 4 Leavers Word of Life Diani camp at the end of the year. He, was also, he also wanted to become a counselor at the same camp after clearing school. Joe's parents are both artists, and apart from playing a few small acting roles in church, he paved a way for, he, paved, he paved a different path for himself, that of active sports. He was an all-rounded champion who left a, a lasting mark in everything that he touched. Dulo, as his friends called him, could perfectly play the trumpet in the school's band, he could play the drums and the melody, he could swim effortlessly, and was also an excellent gamer. In football, Dulo was a winger and a 
good one at that. His favorite team was the Blues Chelsea. It was the Blues Chelsea. He loved Manchester United and was always bantering normal and uh, bantering Norman and his other Man U friends. I'm sure the April 4th game between Chelsea and Man U would have been one of his best moments this year. His greatest of all time in football was CR12, Cristiano Ronaldo. Basketball was his other great love and he was a shooting guard. To put it in perspective, a shooting guard's main objective is to score points for their team and steal the ball on defense. Michael Jordan, one of, the, of Joe's icons, was a shooting guard. Yani dulo ndio alikuwa tegemeo. By the time of his demise, he was an assistant captain in his school's basketball team. That's how good dulo was in the pitch. Basketball brought so much joy to him. In return, Dula used the same game to impact the lives of others. He was a trainer, a young coach, and a great encourager of many. He once came across a 22-year-old boy who was drowning into drugs while trying to deal with grief, introduced him to basketball, and trained him. The boy has since stopped indulging. That was Dula, winning games, hearts, and souls. By the time of his demise, he was, um, from an early Joe, uh, age, Joe was always a bright boy. Always top three in class rankings. His time in uh, Kyurum Singibora Nursery School and the Green Garden School were some of his parents' proudest moments. One of the longest friends, Melvin, remembers how great a person he was in primary school. His favorite subjects were geology, I mean geography, CRE, and Kiswahili. He was a darling to the teachers and students participated in almost all the activities, clubs, and still maintained an excellent performance. For his secondary education, Joe joined Chamakali High School, some 390 kilometers away from home. The distance did not deter him from being the best in his class or leading in the field. His charm followed him all the way to Chamakali. His liveliness and charisma will remain engraved in the lives of his friends, their thoughtful Friday podcast meetings, their entertainment moments at the school, their time on the field, they, their, remain, their, their time at school will not be the same. Joe wanted to pursue aviation, to either become an air traffic controller, ATC, or a pilot. His spirit lives on, flying Joe, fly. 17 years, 3 months, and uh, 29 days from the day Joe was born, he breathed his last. On the 1st of April, 2024, through a road accident, a flower was plucked from us. Some of Dulo's last moments on earth was he sharing samosas with Norman, telling uh, Muita to send him the, the exam timetable, bantering his other friends who were, to, who were to leave the next day, and securing his back left seat on the fateful easy coach bus. What if they didn't travel at night? What if the plans didn't change last minute? What if he boarded a different bus? What if he sat at a different spot? What if Kenyan roads were safe? And what if? These are some of uh, the what ifs running through our minds, some of the questions that we'll never have answers to. And all that we're left with are beautiful moments, smiles, laughter, impact and fond memories that Dulo gifted us. Mom is crushed, dad is devastated, Grandpa Madulo, Shushu Gladwell and Rachel are hurt beyond measure, your siblings, your uncles, your aunties, your cousins, your whole family owns. All close friends, Green Gardens, Word of Life, Nairobi Chapel, Chavakali, Kikuyu Town, your teammates, flatmates, your hoodmates are shattered. Your parents, friends, and families are grieving. The whole country mourns you, Joe. You were loved. We hope you knew that. Sainia Anti Mokami, Joseph Dulo Madulo Mokoho, our champion, will forever remain in our hearts. Lo coma cuera, cuera, cuera.